Hello, so, so I'm going to be talking today about a portion of the, the chapter 9 um, in the Cardi book, some of that. So, um, some of that. So, we're talking about leaving groups, um, some of that, the ability of that, as well as um, adding to um, and kinetic thermodynamic effects and, and things like that, some of that. So, starting off, we're talking about leaving group abilities. And just as a reminder, uh, what you really want in a leaving group um, is the you really want to have a weak base. Um, so with that, you want to have a strong base add and then weak, right? So with that, so you want to have strong, strong base on this side, and you want to end up with a weak base. If you ended up with a strong base, what would happen is the uh, uh, or a nucleophile, I should say. Uh, if you had a a strong nucleophile on here, you would just this um, would then react and you would go back to here. Um, so with that, so you really want to go from strong nucleophile to weak. So with that, and you can measure that by the um, looking at the pKa of the corresponding um, the conjugate acids of these things, um, some like this. So, um, so, for example, sort of HF is a weak acid. Okay, so that means you remember there's this duality of of weak acid, um, strong base, some like that. So strong acid, weak base, some like that. So OH, um, NH, you know, um, things like that. Um, those are going to be relative. Those are going to be pretty weak bases, um, so, or weak acids. So that makes them. Um, uh, their corresponding negative charge to be um, fairly nucleophilic, right? Fairly basic, right? So that so that makes them really terrible leaving groups. Um, so HCl, HBr, HI, and this is this one here. This is a tosylate. Um, this is sort of you can sort of think of it as the equivalent of, of sulfuric acid. These are um, these are all going to be strong acids. The the H uh, the protonated version of them, which which makes these guys um, pretty. Pr pretty good leaving groups, um, stuff like that. So the um, the leaving groups so that these t um, sulfur versions of these, these um, sulfonate uh, leaving groups are really good, um, stuff like that. So you can have um, you just have a methyl group here. This is something called mesylate. Um, the toluene here. This is a tosylate, and then the trifluoro um, trifluoromethyl of it, that version of this is um, is really good. It's a triflate. Um, so that's a, the um, you have a lot of inductive effects. So, so since these fluorine bonds are going to be very electronegative, right? It's going to make this um, pretty weak. Um, so with that. So and the, and you also have the resonance. You can do resonance structures with all of these, which also makes them um, good leaving groups. So with that. So with that. So. Uh, so again, leaving group stability, um, so with that, so charge stability increases, so with that, so these are poor leaving groups, right, so carbon, um, a lot of the just regular alkyl groups, you know, breaking a uh, high, you know, hydride, uh, fluoride, these are all really bad leaving groups, not too bad, uh, chloride's not too bad, bromide, if you can leave, release water or um, some sort of gas, like in, in like in two, those are all really good, and then the mesolate, trif um, tosylate, triflate, those are all really good. Uh, leaving groups, stuff like that. So, so the problem is, if in fact you have something, so if you wanted to swap out a um, an OH for say a Cl, um, stuff like that. So OH is a really bad leaving group, um, stuff like that. So if you just mix these two together, you wouldn't they wouldn't do anything, um, stuff like that. And so what you need to do, if you have a, a, a poor leaving group, what you need to do is convert it into a good leaving group. Okay, so so you can turn this, um, you can react this with tosyl chloride to turn an OH into an otosylate, um, which is a really good leaving group. So now that, that can come in and displace this, and so you end up end up with your product. So, with that, so, so that, that's the trick. It's, you sort of cheat. You should say turn a, a bad leaving group into a good one. Um, so, with that, so again, if you, um, the other thing that you can do, okay, is you can, you can put in strong acids. Um, so with that, so because again, if you just had an alcohol and, and sodium bromide, that nothing's going to happen. But if you put an HBr and you let it reflux for a long time, the bro the the bromine is going to come in and, and displace. And the way that happens is you turn this O again. You're going to turn this OH into what is essentially what is in fact a, a water, a lone pair away from from being a water. So what it does is, is the, um, the 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 two electrons here in this bond are going to end up on that. Um, you are going to end up here, so, so you're going to get the bromine displacing this so that you can release 
so you can release water. So the acid, the, um, the hydrogen, and the acid is going to make this into, again, make this into a good leaving group so the Br can come and displace it. Okay. So with that, so again, this is a way that you can um, break apart uh, ethers, right? So with that, so if you convert this, um, right, you convert it into what is essentially um, right the phenol here. Um, so with that, so with those two electrons, so that's a good leaving group, right? Because all it needs is a uh, these two electrons here to make that lone pair, and so it's it has lots of incentive to leave. So with that, so even a chloride can come in here, um, do an SN2 attack, and kick that away. Okay, so solvent effects. Okay, so with that, so it turns out that the one reactions, SN1, E1, they favor polar protic solvents. Okay, SN2 and E2 favor aprotic solvents. Okay, so what's a protic solvent? Um, a protic solvent is just, a, it's a molecule where somewhere in the molecule there's an H, um, a hydrogen atom, on something other than carbon. Okay, it can be NH, OH, SH, anything like that. Um, so like that, so that makes it into a protic solvent. If if in fact all of your hydrogens are on carbon, so then it's an it's an aprotic solvent. Okay, so here's some of the um, here's some examples in this. So water's a classic um, polar protic solvent. Your alcohols, right, because you have the you have an OH here, right? You always think of water as is HOH. Okay, so right, so that you got one right there, um, right? So with that, so there, there, you know, this says. 2NH molecules, right? 2NH, so that makes a product. Again, you have yourself an NH bond. But all of these, so acetone, acetonitrile, um, dimethylformamide, um, DMSO, so like that. So um, these are all classic A product solvent because all of the hydrogens are on carbons, so like that. So that makes it product. So so these are good for the for the um, for the ones. So SN1, E1, right? So these are good for the uh, for the twos. SN2, E2. Okay. Right, so protic solvents have the ability to um, to stabilize um, the um, right because for SN1 and E1, right, the first thing that happens is the the lone pair or the leaving group leaves to leave a carbocation behind, um, so like that, and that can get um, that can solvate the negative charge um, charges and cage up the nucleophile, you know, so, so the um, it has the ability to stabilize. For SN1 and E1, so like that's so if you had, um, I should say for SN2, I don't think we talked about this. Uh, one of the things that can happen is with protic solvents is they can cage up the, the protic solvents can cage up your nucleophile, okay, to keep it reacting. The other things that they can do is some nucleophiles can react with the acid, the acidic hydrogen on here to um, um, they turn into a base, uh, and you can lose your you, you can lose your nucleophile. So like that's so you have to be really careful with that. Um, so about that. So again, protic solvents can can solvate the negative charges, but the problem is they they're not as tightly bound, right? So about that. So if you look at acetone here, you're going to have the um, right. So about that. So, so this is a polar, right? So that's a polar covalent bond. So it's kind of wouldn't be next to this to this negative charge here. But the problem is you have steric repulsion between these these methyl groups, so it can't quite get close to it. So stabilizing the negative charge is uh, is kind of tough. So if you had a sodium, you're right. It wouldn't be so bad because um, the methyl groups are pointed the wrong way, but stabilizing the negative charge can be can be difficult. So, so. okay. So ge in general, right? So with that, so an SN1, right? So with that, so you want to have you you want to have the aprotic solvents work for SN1, right? So with that, so SN2, right? So with that, you want you want protic solvent. Excuse me, SN2, you want aprotic. SN1, you want protic. So there you go. Okay, so we talked about this last. Um, we have talked about this reaction before, where you come in and you um, uh, you have it basically um, elimination reactions. Okay, but you can go on either side, right? So, so you look on this side and, and that side of your leaving group, and if there's hydrogens, then you can make um, you can make the uh, the double bond, right? So you can make it if it, you can make it on this side. Right, so with that, so or if you if you looked on here, right, so there's hydrogens here, so you can make a double bond on this side. Well, it turns out that, that there is a, a preference for for which side you do, and that's called Zaitsev's rules. Um, so with that, so 
Technically, it's the more substituted alkene will be the more stable. Okay, and the way that you figure it out is it has the fewest CH bonds directly onto that CH. Okay, so, so right, so this one here, right, so that there's an H and an H, right, so, so this has two hydrogens, right, this one has one, two, three, three. Okay, so this has three hydrogens hanging directly off that double bond. Okay, so with that, so, so you want the fewest, right, so this is going to be the major product. Okay, that's the easiest way to figure that out. Okay, so with that, so you could do, um, right, so with that, so you could do here, right? You could do here, but that's just the same molecule. Um, or you could do here, right? So with that, so and usually you just go ahead and draw them, okay? Because usually the, the, usually the, um, the question is to like draw all the products and tell me which one's the major, okay? So with that, so again, you're going to look at, at hydrogens directly off of it. Okay, so, right, so this one has two hydrogens. This one here, right, so those are both carbon-carbon bonds. This one's a hydrogen, only one hydrogen, one hydrogen, right, so with that, so compare those two. So this has fewer hydrogens, so this is going to be the major product. Now, if you want to, um, if you want to prepare the anti-Zeitsev product, okay, what you can do is you can actually use the sterics, okay. You can you, you, you can use sterics um, to your advantage. So if you use something very, a very bulky base, stuff like that. So potassium t butoxide, that's a classic large base. There's a lot of steric bulk. It's going to have a difficult time coming in here and grabbing this hydrogen, okay, stuff like that, because of this um, of all the sterics involved in that part of the molecule. Um, so with that, so it's going to take what it can get and it grabs the uh, the easiest one it can grab. So so this is going to be the major product. So you have the anti zeitsev product. So with that, so but so by switching the base, um, you can um, get the um, what's it? The uh, you can steer it to, towards the um, unlikely product. So with that, so. Okay, so kinetic versus thermodynamic control. Okay, so we're not going to go into this in, in, in depth. Um, what is it? The uh, you know physical organic chemistry or anything like that. So with that, so what we're talking about is uh, kinetic control is when the, the reaction um, picks the lower activation energy. If it has two routes, it has to pick. Okay, um, so with that, it picks it picks the one with the the lower activation energy. Thermodynamic control is is when it picks the uh, the lowest free energies. So where does the product leave, right? So at that so um, so for here I'm gonna kind of come back to this. Okay, so, so this right here, so this one here has a lower. Oop, it goes like that, right? So like that, and so so this this right here. Okay. This would be have a lower activation than this one, right? So with that, but when it goes down here. Um, right, so that it doesn't have nearly the um, the final free energy drop with this one as opposed to this one, and what that allows it to do is is under different temperature scenarios, right? So that you'll get slightly different product profiles. Okay, so at low temperature, okay, uh, one of them is going to be the uh, um, one of them is going to be a, a higher. So that so and uh, uh, and this ends up being the higher one at low temperature. You're looking at um, this is under kinetic control. Okay. This one is at thermodynamic control. So about that. So what's happening is under kinetic control, you don't have very much energy. You do, certainly don't have enough energy up to um, so to get over the high hill. Okay. So with that, so how do you remove energy from the system? You cool it down. So under cold conditions, you don't have enough energy to get here. So with that, so it takes what it can get, and so it goes over the little hill to get here because it's still in a better situation than it was here. Right, you, you you can at least get down here, okay. But uh, if you if you heat it up, now it's got a lot more energy. Now it can go, now it can go all the way over that the big hill and get where it really needs to be. So then it's a much bigger drop, okay. So if it's cold, right? So that so it doesn't have much energy. It goes over the little, it it gets what it can, what it can, right? So that so and it at least goes over the little hill under uh if you heat it up right now it can now it has enough energy to get over the big hill to get to the best place possible and that that's all that's saying okay so like that and so 
that's what's happening here, right? So that's how it has two different areas, right? So that so under low conditions, right? So it's going to go um, so under under low conditions, it's going to go over the little hump, right? So with that to get to get here under the the heavier conditions or under the the hotter conditions, it can go over the big hump, okay? And stuff like that. So again, low temperatures kinetic control. The high temperatures under thermodynamic. Okay. Good luck. <laughs>